Unfortunately, there are often some what are unhelpful misconceptions around what decriminalisation means. Decriminalisation really aims to reach people whose crime is connected to their drug use. And rather than prosecution or punishment, an arrest becomes an opportunity to encourage people towards the support that they need to prevent further harm to themselves, to others and to their community as well. The law around drug use or possession does not change at all. It's just that our response to someone breaking the law that changes. It really requires us to see people struggling to get out of a situation and realising the best way to help them break that cycle and reduce offending is to view them with a public health lens rather than overly punitive or purely punitive. I believe that this would be a much more effective use of the resources available to our criminal justice system to give us an understanding into someone's journey. Decriminalisation is, is not a tool to excuse someone's behaviour or the crime associated with, with it or remove accountability. Rather, it really acknowledges that what we're doing now isn't really working. It's actually making things worse and there's a much better and almost smarter way to work with people in this situation. I think the first thing to say is we can learn a lot from what happens in other countries, but I'm not convinced that there's any one model that is immediately transferable into Scotland. And, and even if there was, uh, I think that rather misses the point. I think part of the real value and richness is the conversation that enables us to model this, the, the, the arrangements that are right for our circumstances. Decriminalisation is a hot topic and people get uh, quite emotionally charged when we talk about that and often lurch to one end of that spectrum. And I, I think the real value is somewhere in the middle of that conversation. There can be no doubt that there are some ends of the, the, the regulations that are getting in the way and, and stopping statutory services, the NHS and the voluntary sector, from, from being able to render the kind of supports that are really necessary for people right now. Uh, things like naloxone, things uh, like drug testing and, and many others that effectively would fit into that spectrum of decriminalisation but would not necessarily be what most people would think of when we enter into that discussion. So I guess what I'd be really interested in seeing is a good, rich conversation taking place. I think we should consider everything. You know, I think we should look at all the options that are available. We, we have um, a really serious situation on our hands with drug-related deaths, um, but also just with drug use in our society. We have high levels of drug use. Um, throughout society, you know, not just individuals at really high risk. Um, so what I think we should do is, yeah, we should look at decriminalisation. I think we should look at the evidence for that. However, if we look at countries that have introduced decriminalisation, countries like Portugal, this wasn't done in isolation. This was done with a whole range of other um, brave steps within a, a drug strategy. So it would be, be good to include that in a whole range of other things. Things like um, safer consumption facilities, drug checking services, services working better together in partnership, information sharing, and just a whole host of it. I think we need to stop looking for one solution um, to, to, to solve this issue and look at a range of different solutions and see how they come together.